Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League lunch hour here on loverugbyleague.com. I'm James Gordon, I'm joined by Drew Darbshire. We'll apologise first, we had two unexpected weeks off. <laughs> I can't remember why we didn't do it last week. Where did we do it? Oh, we had meetings last week with the big bosses. Big no, cheese. that was the week before, wasn't it? The week well, before, anyway, the week anyway. The week before was at Old Trafford, wasn't it? Or something? Oh, I don't or know. Anyway, we're or... back, we're back, we're back. For uh, Rugby League lunch hour, we're going to talk about, we're going to look into the playoff games this week, we're going to talk the latest Rugby League news and gossip as well. Please do leave your, your comments if you want us to debate anything in particular. Drew's got the phone to read the comments, he's not just yeah. he's not just on Tinder here, he's, he's <laughs> reading your comments, he's reading. Uh, any, so anything you want to add to the debate or you want us to talk about anything in particular, please do. Um, Let's have a, a, well, there's just a little bit of breaking news as we come on, um, come on air, so to speak. Yeah. Hulk AR have signed Ethan Ryan from Bradford Bulls. Two year deal, I think it is. Uh, decent signing, he's, he's gone alright at, at the Bulls over the last couple of years. I think he's already made over 100, 100 appearances for, for their club, uh, but I think the time's right for him to, to make the step up and have a dig at Super League can be, because he's been one of the best uh, wingers in the Championship for a, a few seasons now. We'll talk about obviously the Championship playoffs and stuff in a little while, but uh, there's some interesting recruitment going on in the Championship at the moment. Uh, Halifax have brought in Jody Broughton, Tom Gilmore, they signed Paul Braley yesterday, didn't they? You know, Steve Tyra signed a new deal. Um, I forget the other guy that they signed uh, off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> so bad to be fair. Witness have been witness have been busy. We said him. Witness have been busy signing Jake Spedding, Dion Cross. Um, this How do you week, Peter? London Broncos have signed Ollie Ash Allbott and Dan Norman from Widnes. Um I think Featherstone have been recruiting pretty well as well. They signed Ben Blackmore um, this week from we Sheffield. Signed two Italy internationals, Dean yeah, Peralta they, and Alec uh, Cicino. yeah. Um, so lots of interesting um, stuff going on in the Championship. Of course, we don't really know what's going to happen with Swinton and whether some of their players may move on. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the Championship clubs recruit and retain uh, over the course of the off season because obviously the, the reserves are coming back into play in Super League next year so all that means the likes of Featherstone, the likes of Swinton uh, will have to sign a few more players than probably what they, they were doing this time uh, yeah. last year because well, there's they, won't also, have, they won't have as many dual reg players anymore. There's also the argument as well if you have a young player, we were talking about Matty Ashton before. Keegan Hurst, do you see him? Keegan Hurst, that's oh, right. right. Yeah. Um, it, we were saying before about Matty Ashton is players who are youngish. Thomas Mins as well. Thomas Mins. Sorry. That's Sorry, a we're, we're, one. That was a Feverston one. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting all these comments through saying. Uh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, it wasn't a definitive <laughs> list. Right. Um, I want to say this about ball to, to uh, about about Matty Ashton, who's obviously joined Warrington from Swinton. Now, for players like Ashton, who were maybe, I mean, obviously, I know he's Championship Young Player of the Year, and obviously, you know, best young player in Championship in theory. The point I'm trying to make is if you're, say, you're under 25, you'd rather give it a go full-time rugby, wouldn't you, earning 20, yeah. 25, 30 grand a year than you would maybe playing part-time for Swinton and being a, an electrician on weekend. Because, I mean, that's the dream, isn't it? Well, the dream well, is to, to be a full-time player. Right, this is a segue, but you don't, you don't even know this is a segue because I've got a nice little feel-good feel feature coming up on the website on Monday. Uh, so keep an eye out uh, for that with Matty Ashton. I spoke to him after he won his award at the Hilton Hotel in Deansgate uh, on Tuesday night. He was made up and a, a fun little uh, fact about him that he was working on a zero hour contract in a gym while he's been playing at Swinton. Um, and obviously we, we all know what, how, how difficult and challenging a zero hour contract can be. One, you, you could be working nine to five, five days a week, one week, and then obviously not having anything uh, the, the next week. So uh, it's... For, for Matty Ashton, it's it's an all brainer, is it, to, to go to Warrington? I think he's he'll be on twenty twenty five grand uh, for the season. And the the beauty beauty of it is uh, for Matty is that the reserves are coming back uh, next year. So, yeah, so he can prove. So, his, yeah. so we, the, because he's not going to go straight into the first team. So obviously he's got to buy his time. He can maybe have a couple of games for the reserves. See if he can catch the eye of, of head coach Steve Price with his performances in the reserves and uh, maybe get up. Get that call to the first team, but saying that if you're earning 20, 25 grand, you're on a full time contract, you're lifting weights with your mates through the week, uh, having massages and recovery sessions, and then uh, getting the ball skills out on the field, it's 
<laughs> it, is, it, it, it might not be the best paid sports show in the world, but it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's I, still up I mean, there's it's a, one of the best. There's always a lot of moaning about salaries and player salaries and stuff, but I think rugby league players have got to have a bit of perspective. The size of the sport, they should count themselves very fortunate to be able to command the full-time salary playing rugby league. You mentioned the Championship Awards. We'll talk about that first because you went along, you got suited and booted. Dressed to impress, I know your mum was very was very pleased. <laughs> she, with was, yeah, she was. Um, yeah. So Gareth O'Brien, you might have to help me on some of these, but Gareth O'Brien won Championship Player of the Year. Yeah, he beat uh, his teammates John Wilkin and Andy Ackers. I, I would have liked to have seen Andy Ackers win it um, purely for the the fact that he's never played Super League in his life and uh, he's, he's only ever played Championship. Now, and, the thing with the Toronto oh. thing, and I know obviously Toronto have won every single game but one. How come Toronto got three players shortlisted, but then when you look at, say, at Super League, St. Yeah, Helens, are like, you know, a Saints player's not going to get anywhere near Man of Steel, really. I know, I know. It's uh, just well, a weird, it's, it's, is it's that a, fl- a, a quirk of the system? How did they decide the championship? I think, I think it was the coaches, wasn't it? The coaches that did, it, did it. the clubs. Well, because um, I think that's the problem with the Man of Steel voting is you could be the second best player every single week and not get anywhere because someone might be he might be really good one week. Do you know what I mean? Or, or you could you could be like the third best player and get a point every single week and still yeah. be up there coming in the season. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, but what my, my point being is, you don't really get rewarded for being consistent. You could be, you know, you could have ten really good games and ten awful games and get more points than someone who's an eight out yeah. of ten every week. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it's, I don't know. Like, I can't really complain with them when I still voting system this year obviously they tried to, to ramp it up a little bit and and let's face it that there are some uh, legends in that list uh, on, on that panel if not all well yeah I mean I mean, it's not necessarily I mean I don't think you could argue with you know Hastings is going to probably win it isn't he Man of yeah. Steel but I mean maybe it's just a consequence of Saints being more of a, a well rounded team that there's not an individual I mean obviously Coote got some plaudits before he got injured um, maybe it's just that because there's a few players in key positions that they share it amongst Back to the Championship Awards, so Young Player of the Year, Matty Ashton won. Coach of the Year went to James Ford. Now, I'm sure James Ford, it was a little bit sweet because they had a really disappointing end to the season at the weekend when they lost at home to Featherston. Um, but I think, so be, that? I think they can be very, very proud of their efforts uh, this year. I think it might have just been a bridge too far uh, for the Knights this season. Obviously, they've done phenomenally well over the, the last year or so because... They've gone from having no fans whatsoever, or, or, or not no well, fans. They, they had no people turn up to games. Um, yeah. They they were doing great uh, on the field. Um, volunteers have, have done brilliant things off the field with with the marketing strategy. New, new stadium, of course, our, on the horizon. Uh, well. our, our friend uh, Gavin Wilson does a, a great job uh, heading up the marketing there. All volunteers. I don't know how he does it. He's on holiday that much. He, he has um, more holidays than you. <laughs> I know, and I've got an extra five next year. Um, yeah, I I think it was just a, a bit of a bridge too far for for York. I think Featherstone have really impressed me over the the last couple of weeks. That they've took it up a, a notch and the, uh, playing for each other. The thing with Featherstone is Ryan Carr, obviously, you know, a, a fairly a rookie coach, if you like, first season over here. Aust- the, the, the Australians do tend to get themselves up for the finals process a little bit more. Now for Featherstone, they they beat, if Featherstone were to get the grand final, they've got to beat they beat Lee away, they beat York away, they've got to lose this weekend on Sunday night, and then obviously it'd be Toronto away in the final. I mean, that'd be that's almost an impossible run of games, isn't it? Really, but they've got nothing to lose at this moment in time. No, they've not got anything to lose. But I, I don't. I'm trying to not get too involved with this championship talk because I'm I'm, I'm just expecting to on sort of. To okay. The floor and um, go, go all the way. You to might. I'll, I'll be, you, and, and that's no disrespect to to Fem and, and the rest of the teams who have been in the playoffs. Obviously, I, I was tipping Lee, but <laughs> they went out oh, at yeah, first uh, at first chance. But uh, yeah, I, I just can't see past her on top whatsoever. So um, we'll stay with the championship. You might have seen it this week that um, attendances are up thirty one percent. Average attendances are up thirty one percent this season on last season, with an average of two thousand four hundred and eighty nine. Compared to one thousand eight hundred ninety nine from the previous season, of course, that was helped by the fact Bradford and York came up from League One. Witness came down from Super League, and of course, um, their average significantly higher than London Broncos. Um, Toronto topped the average attendance table with six thousand five hundred and twenty one, um, which is expected. That was more than two thousand more than Bradford and Witness, who were very close, for about four thousand three hundred. 
Uh, Lee were next in line, 3,250. Uh, Toulouse were down at 2,000, two, just under 2,500. Featherstone, 2,200. I was a little bit disappointed with Toulouse. Toulouse. Uh, it's not great, the ground there, though. I think next season when they're playing in the Rugby Union ground, I expect them to, to go up. Featherstone, very good, 2,235. York were 2,100. Halifax is this point one. Halifax down at seventeen hundred. Barrow just shy of fourteen hundred. Batley just less than that. Dewsbury twelve hundred. Swinton averaging just over a thousand. Um, Sheffield down at nine hundred forty four. And Rochdale seven hundred ninety five. Although I mean, fair play to the seven hundred ninety five who Roch watched Rochdale this season. I, I, Rochdale I'm, 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 I'm surprised that they're getting that much at Rochdale because well, I'd imagine that's. I mean, to be fair, I think. I think the Rochdale figures are probably boosted by when the likes of Witness and Bradford go, because certainly uh, I went Rochdale Witness and I think the crowd was something like 1,600. Um, you know, and obviously a large proportion of that was from Witness. Um, Rochdale are in a little bit of trouble, aren't they, at the moment? I think they've, uh, they've tried to release players and not give them the notice required after relegation, and that looks like it could get messy. Um, not like rugby league, is it, in the lower leagues for releasing players, eh? Um, let's just round off these uh, championship awards then. So, Club of the Year. In League One was Keith Lee Cougars. Was Keith Lee. Who got the Club of the Year? In, oh, York got it, of course, York. in the uh, thing. Player of the Year in League One was Dion A of Whitehaven who got promoted. I know you spoke to Gary Charlton. Yeah, uh, and It was a clean sweep for Whitehaven, it, to be it, fair, because well, Gary Charlton got Coach of the Year and Andrew Bullman got Young Player of the Year. It, well, if you were watching the presentation as well, which was our uh, stream on the Old League app, um, on the presentation when they, when they was. Uh, Announcing Dion I as the the League One Player of the Year, they actually spelt his first name wrong. Oh, that's uh, good. They spelt it like D E uh, O N instead of D I O N. But hey, hey, uh, anyway. <laughs> Matt Shaw pointed out to me. I, I didn't notice it, at first, um, but I'm about to share it with you all. Why? Um, why even a course? Um, Gary Charles, some real good bloke as well. Sports with him afterwards. He said a lot of good things about the reserves, and obviously that that becoming. Uh, your way over the next oh, couple of weeks we, we've got a, a quite a few little interesting news bites with him uh, but he's very very passionate about it being a local based squad that he, he said that you've got a car full of Lancashire lads who just travelled to, to Cumbria and obviously two Papua New Guineans and Jesse Joe Parker and Dion I and the rest are, are purely Cum Cumbria I mean obviously with Barrow, with Barrow being relegated why even a fly in the flag for Cumbria next season in Championship I did speak to one of the Whitehaven directors earlier this week, actually, and obviously they've got some stadium development plans um, in place there, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. Now, obviously Whitehaven have earned automatic promotion as winning the, as league winners, but let's just touch upon the ridiculous playoff format that everyone's been moaning is, you know, everyone's been moaning that I've been criticising this playoff format because of the Toronto thing, but it's not to do with that. We've got a prime example of why the playoff format in Championship and League One is ridiculous. Doncaster beat Newcastle in the first week of the playoffs. Um, that then put Doncaster through to this weekend. Newcastle, in the meantime, had to beat Hunslet last week. Was it Hunslet, Workington, Hunslet? And now we've got Newcastle and Doncaster again. But where's it at? It's at Newcastle. How is it fair that Doncaster, they've already beat Newcastle away, and yet here we are, to get to the grand final, they've got to beat Newcastle away again. Ridiculous. Do you reckon they need leaking that, James? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. But it's completely unnecessary because how difficult would it have just been to say, right, if you beat the team, just like it goes in Super League, if Salford had beat Wigan last week and then Wigan and then Salford lost tonight and Wigan beat Cass it was the way around, you'd ex it'd be at Salford, wouldn't it? Mm. It'd be Salford versus Wigan. So why on earth in the Championship and League One this season have they just completely gone against all the players? And I'm sick to death of seeing people saying, oh, well, you, you know, it's just, they deserve it for being, finishing top. No rubbish. They, they, they get the advantage for finishing where they do, where they are. You can't say. It's almost pointless playing that first week of the playoffs. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I've got that off my chest. Um, um, let's run through some of the news. Salford Casper tonight, we'll, we'll talk to you in a minute. Um, Robert, we've got a couple of comments coming on. on as well. Um, Pete Colley says, how do you, Lars? How do you, Pete? Keith Thorpe says Ben Blackmore to Fair is an outstanding signing. Uh, I agree. To be well, fair. I mean, she I mean, at Sheffield yeah, she a Sheffield had a Sheffield had a decent squad this year, but you've got to worry about. I don't know if you've seen it on the site last week. You've got to worry about the stadium issue at Sheffield because it's absolutely not fit for purpose. The Sheffield ground. Um, there's been a massive issue where Sheffield United won 
the bid or the tender or whatever it was for developing the Olympic Legacy Park. Now, because Sheffield United have been having some ownership battle, the, there's some um, prince from, I can't think what country he's from, he's like an Arab. An Arab prince has basically got full, following a, a legal battle, he's now got full control over Sheffield United. Um, now, the plan was originally that Sheffield United women's team would develop the stadium at Olympic Legacy Park so they could play there. Um, my understanding is this Arab prince has got very, shall we say, traditional views. So there's some concern as to whether Sheffield United will even have a women's team moving forward. Wow. So now Sheffield Eagles find themselves in a bit of limbo uh, because there's not, there's just nothing at that ground that you can generate revenue from in terms of yeah you can get people in, but very little hospitality. There's very little. It's, it's just an, you know they shouldn't even be. In my opinion, they shouldn't be allowed to play championship there. But that puts Sheffield in a very awkward position because. They've had a decent team, they won the 895 Cup, they had a decent team together this year, I know Pat Walker's retiring, but it's like, with, if players like Blackmore and Anthony Thackeray maybe, and players like that, they need to be trying to keep as yeah, many of them as possible definitely. to go. Uh, a couple more comments, Dave Taylor says, got England rugby union on the teller, 18 minutes on the clock and 7 points on the ball, but not sure who started yet. To be fair to the Rugby World Cup, and I'm going to chuck this in now, uh, you may have seen my piece, in fact we'll talk about this now, you might you might see my piece about International Rugby League and Tonga. Now, you know, you can like Rugby Union or not like Rugby Union, I, I mean I don't mind watching it if I have to. The thing that's impressed me about the Rugby Union World Cup is the, the nations like Russia, Uruguay, Japan, they're all made up of players from those countries. So the Russians, they're all Russian, they're all born in Russia, they're all... They all play the rugby in Russia. I think there's two of the Russian players that play. One plays at Sale, actually, and one plays at Clermont in France. But they're all Russian. The Uruguayans, they're all South American. The Japan team, they're all Japanese. They've got, I think they've got four or five Aussies, the Japan, the Japan team, but they've all been playing their domestic rugby in Japan for the last four or five years. And so was that okay for Say again. Great Britain. Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, for, uh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I've got no issues with for Great Britain if a player's got residency. I've got no issues with him playing. I'm, I, what I'm saying, I'm to, what, on that. what I'm saying to you is, is that rugby union are developing their international game the right way. They're not just, they're not just getting a load of Australian lads together, calling them Scotland, and playing them in World Cup. They've got actual genuine players there. And Uruguay beat Fiji. Um, you know, if you seen that, and I just think it's a, it just highlights for me the weakness of the international game rugby league. We'll talk about Tonga. So there's been a big fuss about Tonga this week. They've had Israel Folau that they're trying to get in, which is a, a farce in itself. Um, but then there's been a big fallout where Christian Wolf left. They got a new coach in. He's left. Frank Endicott's doing something there. Fafita and Tamalolo are refusing to play for Tonga. Um, because of a fallout with the governing body. The Prime Minister's come in and said we're going to switch the governing body from you to someone else. Um, fourth, this is the fourth best rugby league nation according to the world rankings and it's just an embarrassment. Yeah it is. Um, obviously there's a new board uh, at Tonga uh, Rugby League and the players are just at loggerheads with the board. Uh, they, they sacked Christian Wolf last month, um, appointed Garth Brennan, the, the former Gold Coast Titans boss, as uh, the new coach for the World Cup night. And then they also appointed former Wigan and Witness boss uh, Frank Endicott to take charge of the two te uh, 13 aside test matches against Great Britain and Australia this autumn. Endicott said privately uh, that he will be prepared to step aside for Wolf to return uh, just for the good of the game, while Brennan uh, resigned earlier this week. Um, just because he, he, he realises that it's a political debate and it's what? just a, a big dispute uh, between the players and the board. Uh, so it just seems like one big but mess. It, I, 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 but you what, can expect this from like the, the 40th ranked team in the but, world. But Chris, Christy Wolf kind of revolutionised the international game in 2017. Uh, he, he, he somehow persuaded the likes of Andrew Fafita and Jason Tamalolo, among others, to, to switch their allegiance from Australia and New Zealand uh, to represent the, the country of heritage, which is Tonga. Um, so there was a breath of fresh air in the 2017 World Cup. They, they breathed life, them and Fiji, into uh, the international scene in rugby league. So why? And, and they had a fantastic tournament. They reached the semi-finals. Only just lost to, to England, yeah. England in the semi-finals. I mean, the, so the, the, why, big, the big problem I have with all why this... Why Wolf? I don't get it. 
Well, I mean, I mean, the big problem is you've got like, I, I think so. I, I did a my edit's column this week was about this very issue. Um, you know, you look at the twenty thirteen World Cup, Italy and USA did really well, and what's happened to them since? Nothing, because all that happens is they get players together for a World Cup. There's no lag, lasting legacy. There's no domestic rugby league being grown really. I think Italy, both Italy and USA have exactly the same thing where they've had two different governing bodies fighting. The USA Tomahawks actually switched to a different governing body and had to rename to USA Hawks. It's just like all that momentum and goodwill and, and whatever progress that you build during those tournaments is almost instantaneously lost because, you know, it, it, it's all built on sand. You know, and like I say, I think that's, if we're going to talk rugby union for a second, that's where rugby league needs to look at rugby union. Look at the international I mentioned it in the blog. There was a game last week, Peru played Uruguay at rugby league, and it was in Australia. It's a farce. It's being billed as Peru's first international rugby match. It's a joke. It's not. It's just a lot of Australian lads who may have some loose South American... It's like that Blake Austin Portugal thing. They've got some loose South American heritage that have played an international in Australia. No one in Peru will have a clue about rugby league. No one will even know that game's going on. I know what you're saying, but I'm on the, the USA rugby team as well, and there's uh, players from New Zealand. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everyone. Well, I'm not saying everyone. Is, no, I'm, uh, I'm not saying. Indian, sorry. <coughs> yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But what I'm saying is, if you look at Russia and Uruguay and Japan, they're all built around. They've all got domestic comps. They've all got competitive domestic teams, and they're developing it in the right way. Did you I mean, like said Joff, that. Joffa Archer, uh, player for England in the World Cup at cricket. But that's but that's that's a different thing, though, isn't it? Because in, he's not. He's playing for England through choice. Do you know what I mean? It's not like it's di- it's like the whole Ben Stokes thing. He could play for whoever he wanted to. It's completely different to making up that rugby league's massive in Scotland because we've got a load of English lads who who can play for Scotland. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I, I disagree. I'm anyway, not anyway, um, sort of slightly positive on the international front. Poland are playing their first official home international. I'm on board with this. It's in Poland. They're playing Czech Republic. They've got, I think, it's homegrown players, but they've got five Aussies with Polish heritage or something coming over. Um, but they're spending a week learning about the culture and all that sort of stuff. So that's quite good. Nice, um, nice. Some other news. Um, our mate, Charles Nicol Klogstad, one of our favourite NRL players, will not be playing for Cook Islands at the World Cup Nines. Um, yeah, he's, he's had a, he said his body's feeling it from his debut season in the NRL. Batley have signed a very German-sounding international, Ben White. Um, we've mentioned the witness in London. Joe Westerman's gone to Wakefield. That was, um, uh, that's been known for quite a while, but that's been confirmed this week. James Cunningham cleared of racist abuse uh, during London's win at OKR recently. Um, if you've not seen it on the site, French Roundup every week. The Elite Two Championship kicks off in France this weekend. Um, how, how long is it now until we go to France? <coughs> November, weekend? so I'm not sure why, but the second division starts this week and then the Elite One Championship starts in about six weeks' time. I'm not sure. So yeah, we'll be there, we'll have, we'll have, we'll be we'll have un- rival, unrivaled French coverage. In Carcassonne as well. We'll um, none of us know any French. We? Je ne crois pas. Is that? I don't understand. I'm uh, sure it is. So I'll probably be saying, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be saying that quite a few times. Um, St. Helens have confirmed Luke Douglas and Liam Cooper will leave. I think Douglas is retiring, isn't he? Liam yep. Cooper is meant to be going to witness. Um, North Wales coach Anthony Murray's got a new deal. Paul Gallon is playing at the Super League Grand Final. Who'd have thought it? I saw some clickbait on that the other day. Um, he's, <laughs> he's playing in the PDRL game at Old Trafford. Danny Ward signed a contract extension. Very good news for the Broncos. <coughs> with London. Very good. Very good um, Jamaica international Wayne Retty has signed... A new deal at Batley. Nine caps for the Reggae Warriors. Um, quiz this week. Can you name the 20 clubs that have played in the World Club Challenge? That's a quiz on the site if you want to have a We've look at that. We've had a, a, a couple of good reviews on that. We've had a couple of little disputes as well on it. Um, just disputes over what? Uh, so, well, Eastern Suburbs. Is it, it was Eastern and Suburbs. And you're giving away one of the answers here. Well, you, you asked me the question, James. Well, um, <laughs> Benji Marshall's going to carry on again. Next year, Arthur Romano has signed a new one-year deal at Catalan. I think he's ended the season. Well, Hulk are confirmed signing a Jordan Abdul. Um, I think that's it. I think we've gone through everything now. So, with that in mind, let's talk. In fact, no, off the record, this week, we had some belters this week. So, um, <laughs> we did, uh... let's talk about some of them. Ben Barber to Lee. 
Ben Barber to Lee, and that is 100% true. He tried to, Lee Centurions tried to sign Ben Barber. It's 100% true. Um, they, they contacted him via his agents, but uh, Ben Barber just wasn't interested in coming back uh, to England. He must be pretty happy in what he's doing. What uh, is he? Is he like, he, was he like a truck driver? Or he something? was a truck driver, and I think he was playing a little bit of football, well, soccer over there. Uh -huh. um, just for a local side, uh, seem, so seems to be just enjoying enjoying the quiet life these days, and it's it's quite it's it's, it's madness because um, I I forgot the other day he's a reigning man of steel. Uh, yeah. That's how long this season has been. Um, I, I thought it was a couple of years ago he was man of steel, but it wasn't. He's, he's the reigning man of steel. Um, we've had a couple of uh, more little juicy bits of gossip. Uh, Tompkins reunion in Perpignan in 2020, possibly. Yeah, Joel um, and Logan linked with Catalan. Um, obviously, Logan leaving Salford at the end of the season. Salford wanted to keep Logan, uh, but his contract expires and, and the Red Devils can't quite afford to, to pay his wages. They've got Connor Jones in from Featherstone, uh, who will just effectively replace Logan at Salford next year. Joel asked for a release uh, on compassionate grounds from Hokiari, was granted that. Uh, so he's currently a free agent without a, a club. Uh, and w well, uh, there are little, there, there are murmurs that it will be Sam, Joel <coughs> and Morgan Tompkins at, at Catalan Dragons in 2020. Off the record every Wednesday on the site, um, another name in off the record this week is Richie Myler. Now with Leeds are being linked to Luke Gale, they've already got Rob Louie. Um, so Myler could be surplus to requirements because I think Callum McClelland as well he wants to stick around at Leeds doesn't he and, and try and make his claim for a place yeah um, obviously reports in the papers uh, surfaced earlier this week say linking R Richie Myler with a move to uh, Hawkingston Rovers for, for next season I don't think he'll, he'll be at Leeds uh, this time next year Richie Myler um, I know he's, he's still under contract with the Rhinos but obviously Luke Gale that's a dumb deal um, well, well, I mean, I mean, him being there this time next year is different to him to, being there next season. Well, I don't think he'll be there next season. I don't, so think, I don't think he'll, he'll undergo pre-season training. Um, Luke Gale to to the lead is hundred percent done. Um, so and then Richardson it, 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 to Cass. Well, so it's so it is. Uh, it's being reported. I think I think Richardson will be a, a cracking sign for Cass, but it it will be interesting because Richardson and Truman might be the youngest halfback combination. Uh, we've seen for, for some time, but both uh, fantastic players. Obviously, Leeds is starting arms next season will be Robert Louis and Luke Gale. Um, and obviously, Cal McClellan wants to, to fight for his place at the club as well. So that, that doesn't really leave uh, Richie. And I don't think Richie Marley will want to be a backup, will he? he? He won't want to be playing reserves one week and, no. and not the next. <laughs> obviously, he's been looking at the move to Osprey in rugby union as well in previous weeks. So I'm not too sure. I don't, I mean, the thing with Marley is that there is in Marley from union. He doesn't strike me as a, a rugby union sort of player, really. I mean, he's not quite, you know, you won't play him scrum half necessarily. He's not, maybe he's not big enough. His kicking game is not good enough to be a fly half. So, um, I'm not sure where we would play if he switched to rugby union. I'm not, I'm not sure where he, where he can go in, in rugby league. Uh, which Toronto, teams? would Toronto have a look at him? Because, I mean, Toronto, you presume... Toronto have got Mellor and Macron, haven't they, at the moment. Now, is Macron going to be up for another seat and go around again and have another season and, and have one in Super League? I reckon, I reckon he'll, he'll want to play Super League with Toronto because he's, he's been there from the start, hasn't he? It's going to be interesting because... And, and obviously, Matty Smith will be on the market as well, so it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up. I think... It, I think he might end up maybe at Lee. Um, but that's. Who, Myler or Matty uh, Smith? Uh, Matty Smith. Uh, I think he lives in and around the Lee area. Um, I, I don't, there's nothing in that anywhere. The, I'm, I'm not got any in no knowledge. Right, I'm, I'm just well, thinking where, where he'll end up. So, uh, sorry, well, we've just got a couple of questions. Uh, Scott Johnson, Gilles Lee, who's to cast. We, we think it's it's Danny Richardson. Um, Richard and Truby is a good prospect, Scott says, but Cass need a leader on the pitch. Or White Gale, Aiden Caesar would have been a better fit. Uh, Aiden Caesar's been killing it though for the Raiders in the NRL. He's been playing uh, for Canberra. I know George Williams is going to. Well, Josh to Dugan's the been getting off the ground as well, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't think. I, will Cass be able to afford Josh Dugan? Well, Dugan's? I was more thinking Warrington, but then I was trying to think, could you not? Not, not everyone can go to Warrington, James. Well, I know, but they, they need to sign. They, Warrington have got a, a bit of a recruiting Could, could job. Dugan go to Toronto? 
next year as a marquee player. Well, I mean... Obviously, <laughs> Ricky Latelli's on 400 grand a, a year at the way back. The thing with Toronto is they're, they're, they're spending pretty much up to the salary cap as it is. So, I mean, how are they going to... Oh, I, I, th- I think if Toronto will come up, it'll be, it'll be a, an almost different team. Do you think? We'll see. Do you think? Yeah. I, I, th- I think they spend big, maybe six players, six or seven players will come in. But, they, but like I say, you know, you look at... I suppose it. I suppose it's the thought that if they're in Super League, they won't have to pay as much because they're having to pay a bit over the odds now to attract players because they're in Championship. So like uh, Josh McCrone, for instance, well, we don't, uh, uh, you'd be able to persuade McCrone to go over a bit cheaper if they were in Super League yeah. than, say, if they were in Championship. Because uh, I think Ryan Brown is on a pretty penny. At the well, and that's that's a big problem. If they've got players on contract, I mean, I don't know what everyone's contract situation, but Briley's a good one he mentioned where he's on contract that's on, or they don't want him, but unless they pay him off, which, of course, counts on the salary cap anyway, there's not really much you can do. Well, and no one's going to take on Briley, Briley's contract. And, and, you don't, and obviously, Briley's not, probably not want, wanting to, to take a little bit of a pay. Well, no, I mean, I, I, if I was him, I'd sit tight. I mean, it, it doesn't sound... You know, the sort of things you hear from players who've been over there, it doesn't always sound as rosy as... Uh, as as people make out, which is a bit. I mean, I know there was talk that they they were paid late. I think last month or the month before. Um, yeah, it's a bit. I, I like I say. I think hopefully if Toronto get to if Toronto get to Super League, I th- I'm I'm hoping for their sake probably that their the their salary payments will come more in line with other clubs because obviously at the moment Toronto are paying way above the market value for players. Whereas you'd like to think that maybe once they've got into Super League that that'll, that'll come down. Mm-hmm. Um, are we done? Comments yeah, done? Yeah, comments. Why right, so we'll tonight, to Salford, it. Castleford. You'll, you'll be there. Our mate Steve from Seven Telecom Solutions upstairs will be there. Are you, Salford, were, I, Salford played well last week at Wigan, didn't they? It was, did, it, was a they really, it was a really good game. It was a fantastic game and I think that was a perfect advertisement for, for Super League playoffs. Uh, both teams going hard at it, and I, I think the o- the only difference in the game was just Wigan's goal goal line defence. They, they scrambled really, really well against Salford. It, it's not as though the Red Devils didn't uh, throw anything at uh, Adrian Lamb's side, but I'm tipping Castleford um, this week. I think Castleford just know how to. I know they've not got much experience in playoffs themselves, but they've got they've certainly got a lot more um, than Salford over the last couple of years, and uh, I think Daryl Powell. Uh, can take a lot of confidence from from last week's game. Um, the um, I think it's only yeah, the second think, time Salford have been in the playoffs, isn't it? I think yeah. the second time. The, I think they they made it under Carl Harrison. I think one year. Um, for me, that game last week, the Wigan Salford game, perhaps highlighted a few things about Super League that it was. It was, a, like, it was a fantastic form as well from Salford. Yeah, it highlighted really. the good and the bad. I think of some, or, or certainly, you know, like I say, the Salford following was great. That made for a great atmosphere. I think that highlighted the fact that. As much as it's not about away fans, blah 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 blah, it's a much better atmosphere. It looks much better on TV when you've got home fans and away fans. That's a fact. Um, there was a few decisions in the game that I thought um, were a little bit. I'm not criticising referee, but it, it, it comes down to you know when the ball comes loose in a tackle, and it's almost like they give it as a knock on or they give it as a penalty, and depending on which one of those things they come up with. It can swing the game. So I think there was a couple of instances, I think where Salford lost it and um, it was given as a knock on and then you know Wigan lost it, it was given as a penalty. I think it was a good example, because the game was played at such a pace, a good example as to why Super League needs a second referee, just to police that sort of play the ball area. Um, I thought it was a good example of that. Um, the Jackson Hastings, what did you think of the eight-point try thing? I thought it should have been an eight-point try. Yeah, I, th- I think it should have been an, eight- an eight-point try. Um, and and I, didn't, I didn't really see anything in it. Oh, it was, I don't, field, I don't you know, think when, it was. Oh, he went for the little, little barn. Yeah. Obviously, it was just it was just a con- confrontation between the pair. Now, um, and and at the time Hastings played on, it was only a couple of tackles later. Yeah, then he got the thing. Yeah. Uh, held the, his eyes. The so thing I, with I, it, I don't even know if it was in that involvement with Cole. The thing with the eight point track is. I don't necessarily think it was malicious from Tony Clark, no. just but he did hit him on the back of his head yeah. his elbow. What gets me is one, why wasn't it reviewed on the video? Two, they obviously the disciplinary said that it should have been an eight point try. But I mean, what use is that to Salford now? Mm. That they're saying well, and he and club obviously hasn't had a ban. 
But then, uh, so he's almost like not being punished. They've basically said he's had, he's done the offence and he's not being punished for it. So how does that work? I don't understand how that I'm works. Not, yeah, I'm not sure how that works either. Um, I mean, it's difficult because, you know, people always say it with on report, isn't it? Yeah. Like, if you get put on report for something, the club that you're playing against doesn't get any benefits. So, like, what can we say? We, can, we can't really say that next time Salford play, we're going to get a 2 0 head start. Do you know what I mean? It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he probably, he probably should have got he should have got an eight point try at the time of the game, and I, but I don't think it was malicious enough for a ban. Uh, if that makes sense, I think. But yeah, it should have been so, an eight point try. So Salford cast tonight. Jackson Hastings potentially his last game, definitely his last game at the AJ Bell for Salford. Um, now tomorrow night Saints Wigan, big game. I think. I almost think that, I don't know, I, I think Saints will win, but I actually think it would be better for Wigan if Saints win, because I just, I don't know, I just sort of feel like Wigan will have a better chance in the grand final if they've Saints not, win. they've not like riled Saints up, yeah. do you know what I mean? But then at the same time, I suppose you could make the argument, well if Wigan win, then they've almost got a little bit of a voodoo, a bit of a... Hoodie, voodoo, whatever you say. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm predicting. I'm predicting Wigan by four. I, I think. Well, you I, would. I, no, I genuinely. I'm, I'm predicting Saints beat Wigan earlier on this year, but I think the tide's turned now, and I think um, Wigan are playing some unbelievable rugby at the minute, and the defence has been sensational in recent. Well, that, Wigan's defence is in in the last couple of weeks has been like it was under Sean Way. It's been ruthless. Um, they've been boosted by the return of Ollie Partington this week. Because he had a ban um, last week against Salford, um, I think we're going by four. It's going to be a. I think it, it, it. I think this has got the ingredients to be a Super League classic. I think this has got the ingredients to to be a game that we look back on in maybe five six years and, and we'll remember fondly um, because both teams are playing at, at their absolute best. Uh, but I don't think the week off last week would have favoured Saints. Well, listen, I was just going to. I was just going to say this. Obviously, if Saints lose, is it almost better for Saints to lose tomorrow? Because <coughs> they've had so few intense games. Because obviously they won the league years ago, and like they've had a week off now since the last league game. They'll play this week. If they win, they've got another week off. Effectively, you'd go to the grand final having only played one game in the last three weeks, mm -hmm. and it's like you know, would you be better off having to play Salford or Castleford at home? Leading into the grand final, possibly. Uh, if, if, if I was a player at a club, I wouldn't want a week off because it stops momentum, and I don't, yeah. I don't care which way you look at it. Obviously, you, your body might, might might appreciate the the rest uh, that you get from having no serious yeah, yeah. contact. Well, I mean, I think Saints. But, I think the Challenge Cup final is a prime example of yeah. that, isn't it? Where Saints have been so good up to a point, they've started resting players and started trying to preempt it, and they've completely lost the momentum, haven't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I just don't I, don't. I don't rate weeks off. I think they kind of being punished for having for having a football for doing so well earlier on in the season and running away with the the league leader's shield. Um, good, good that they celebrated that, by the way. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to both games, and these are exactly what the Super League playoffs are about. Where I, I've tipped Cass and, and Wigan, you've tipped uh, Saints and uh, so. Salford, and. And we've not done that on purpose, have we? We, oh. genu we genuinely think that. Um, so, so it's too tight to call. Um, and I think this is the closest Super League playoffs have been in, in years, really. So that's tonight, Salford Cast Saints. We've got a couple. Uh, Scott, Scott Johnson, I think he's a Cast fan, he says uh, they put Coif, which is, I think, come on, you for. Uh, Scott says, Zach's had a lot to do with Wigan's defensive goal line D, has been brilliant. He has. Uh, Zach Arnick this year has been. Incredible. Uh, he's had a, a fantastic year at Wigan in attack and defence. He's been a lot more solid and reliable uh, than what he's been in the past, where he's he's been a little bit. He's, he's had a little bit more flurry in his game in the past, but he looks much more solid and reliable, especially under the eye ball. He takes it with ease. Uh, his goal line defence, and he's always speaking to the players in front of him. He's always speaking to Wigan's defensive line, telling them to ship wide or or come in tight. Uh, Somewhat wide. <laughs> Do you, um, do you think uh, do you think Adrian Lamb has learned over the season? Because of course he came in. I mean, obviously they had a lot of Sean Edmonds nonsense, but Lamb was very like, I want to change the style of play. I want to play attacking rugby. I want to do X, Y, and Z. 
And it's only since they've sort of gone back to basics and focus on the defence that we're going to sort of been able yeah. to go up again. And, is, and that, is that maybe systematic of how the game is over here, maybe? Well, I know, I know that Matty Peat uh, returned to, to Wigan midway through the season. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on his role with the club. He, he, he was head of youth last time, but he's not head of youth this time because I think that's taken up by Mick Cassidy, who, who came in at the start of the season from Witness. And I think Matty Peat's um, actually... Had a lot more work to do with the defensive side of, of Wigan uh, it's, it's because he, he went off to, to sell Sharks but returned to the Warriors earlier in the year. So I think he's had a, a lot to do with it. But I think it was always just going to, going to take time for Wigan under Adrian mm. Lamb because it's such a different style of, of play uh, than, than Sean I mean, Wayne did. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty mad really when you consider that Le- at the start of the year, Leeds and Wigan were both sort of in this like mini crisis. And you look at Leeds never really recovered from it, just about survived relegation, but Wigan have gone. From that point to effectively grand final contention, yeah. you know. It's yeah, it, it, it's been an incredible rise for Wigan this year, uh, especially when you consider it Magic Weekend. They were seventh, Warrington was second. Yeah, sixteen was it sixteen points to be behind? Yeah, and uh, I mean, I mean, we haven't talked about Warrington, well, which we, we maybe should. Yeah, Louis Banks, uh, cheers for getting in touch, Louis. He's, he's messaged us the last couple of weeks saying we're the show. We are sorry. Um, we, we've. Yeah, we reasons are out of our control. We, we, yeah, we, we couldn't have done it last week. We couldn't do it the week before. But we're back. We're hopefully going to be Where's back for the foreseeable every single week, every Thursday, <laughs> twelve till one. Um, he says, "Where do you think that passes off to?" Because uh, he was dragged off with twenty minutes to go on Thursday. Yeah, it shows he has no future at Warrington. Well, that, well, yeah, well, that, we, we've we've been told that Deck Patton wants to stay at Warrington next year and wants to fight for his place. Um, but obviously, you've got Gareth Widdick coming over from the NRL. So well, they're so going to need a backup, aren't they? They can't just run with Austin yeah, and Widdick. Yeah, you're, also, you're automatically going to have Steph Ratchford as your fullback and Gareth Widdick and Blake Austin as your starting arms. But they, I mean, Warrington have got a massive issue, haven't they? I mean, to but go you've, from. You've, you've also got uh, Danny Walker as well waiting in the wings for it. Yeah. Well, well let, let's just talk about Warrington. They've gone from being surefire second place to finishing fourth and then losing in the first week of the playoffs. That's a disaster for Warrington, it has to be said. Um, but they won the Challenge Cup, so you know it's it's a bit like well, okay. But of course, the league title is the one that Warrington desperately want, and there is they've been as far away from it this year as they have been for however many years. Now, to go from where they were in second place, let let let's not let's not sugarcoat it. It's been a disaster. They've been the worst team in Super League over the last ten rounds of the season. They lost nine of the last twelve. They were actually the worst form team out of the whole 12 teams in Super League over the last, the, for the final 10 games, which is really poor. They've got a bit of a rebuilding job. I know they've signed with it, but they're losing Bryce and Goodwin. Ryan Atkins has gone already. So that those are your two starting centres. I mean, I know Toby King sort of got rid of Atkins you know, early this year, but they've got to sign two new centres haven't they I know they've been linked with Gellin and Brown from Witness but you're not going to go surely you can't tell me Warrington are going to go into next season with Gellin and Toby King as their two first choice centres I just don't see that do you know what I mean <coughs> then you know I mean obviously they're alright at full back they're alright on the wings but you still feel they need something extra in the pack really I, I think on, on paper Warrington's team is great well but 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 look where they finished. Well, you know, they've lost nine of the last twelve. But if, if you compare Warrington and Wigan's team on paper, I think. That, I, I think and again, Warrington I think it all it all comes it all comes down to Warrington's academy, doesn't it? Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like Wigan have always got <coughs> players to come in. You know, with all due respect, Lamatazi would never play would never play for Wigan because instead of putting Lamatazi on the bench, Wigan had put a Morgan Smith. I know, I know what you're saying, but would, would, would what, Rome, Romain Navarrete play for Warrington? Well, I mean, I mean. Potentially, but it's a different. Navarrete's young though, isn't he? Navarrete's quite young though, isn't it? He's not like a. I can't see Navarrete being but, at Wigan next year. But like anyway, that. anyway, Warrington. Be interested to see how they recruit. Did they sign? Do you think did he sign? If, if you're in Warrington's academy though, they've just signed Sammy Kabula from Wigan. Uh, he's come through the academy at Wigan, played one game for the first team. He's a, he's a, he's a, I, I rate him as a, as a forward. I think he's got a, a decent future in the game. 
But if you're, if you're already in Warrington's academy, you'd be, you'd be an well, old it's like, I mean, it's like, you're another it's, like Ash, the it's like Ashton and Brown, the two other examples. If, if you were if you were Warrington's academy winger or Warrington's well, academy centre, and you're thinking, why are they bringing this lad well, in from Wigan? We've seen um, Josh Thulis make his mm. Warrington debut earlier this year. He's a fullback. Uh, he's played fullback for for the Wolves. Played um, he played also on the wing, wing one day. Yeah, yeah. They're the exact position Matty Ashton plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I can't understand um, why they've signed Ashton. Well, I can understand it because he's a fantastic player and he's done very, very well in the yeah, championship. He, but we've yeah, also got Thulis, and and there's only going to be one of them two who, who gets a permanent spot in that team. Well, they're not, they're, there's they're no, not and, and don't forget, through. there's no guarantee that they're going to anyway. I mean, they've got Lineham and Charlie, they've got Jake Mamo, so you're already fourth choice. Mm. You know, before you know, Ashton's going to come in as fourth or fifth choice as it is. Yeah, uh, well, Louis says that Riley Dean is a much better prospect than um, Deck Patton. Uh, obviously, Riley Dean made his debut earlier really this year. Yeah, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't overly convinced. But obviously, you've only seen him once. But I think, I mean, a good example is the Matty Smith thing as well. Is obviously why do worry to get rid of Kevin Brown and bring Matty Smith in, and it's just been a disaster for Warrington. But then, having said that, they've won the only major trophy on offer so far. Um, um, it's, Louis says, from his point of view, uh, Warrington's fitness is shocking this year. No commitment mm. as a team, uh, more of a group of players. They lost John Clark, didn't they? John Clark went out at the end yeah. of last season. You know, we don't know how much of it. He thinks there are that, too right? many mediocre players at Warrington. I beg to differ on that one because I don't think there are too many mediocre players. I, I just think you just. Idiot, just they've, they've not got that togetherness that yeah, the, the Wigan team Yeah, and, and, and I example. think that all comes from your academy. I just think you look at if you had two or three Joe Philbins. Yeah. Like, you know, like Wigan have got Parton and Byrne, Smithies all coming in. You know, Saints have got Thompson, Matty Lees. You know, those sorts of players that just give you that extra 5 to 10%. And for whatever reason, and Warrington now, don't forget, Warrington have now got an unbelievable roster of staff in that youth. They've got, they've got Paul Anderson, haven't they? Mm. Um, you know, they've got loads of people in the club to develop this. And, and presumably they've identified it as, a, as an issue and they yeah. need to work on it. But they're going to have to start seeing results soon because otherwise they're going to be left behind. Um, that, got Lewis Johnson as well. He's bought from Castle 50 grand. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, why would you spend that amount of money on a player that he's still not getting in the first team? Because, but, but that that annoys me a little bit because they bought him as an academy prospect. And obviously we were doing a lot of comparisons with Wigan, but it, say if it happened at Saints and they bought him at Saints, would you not rather give... Lewis Johnson a spot on the bench yeah, for, for a Lama season Tarzan. than Lama Town. Yeah, no, I um, agree. Domont says some attitude by Wigan to graft the way to be 80 minutes from the grand final without playing anywhere, anywhere near the best. Uh, still don't think uh, Ian knows his best attacking combination. Uh, Lamb, sorry, uh, knows his best attacking combination yet either. Plenty more to come. Yeah, I, I agree with, with Dom. Now, I, I, it's got, and obviously, this also wraps into a, a question we've got from Scott, who says, would you go with Zach as Wigan's number one or French uh, in 2020? No, I, it's got to be Hardacre, hasn't it? I think... I think French plays centre, will he? I, no, I think, I think Hardacre might play... I think Lam might play Hardacre at centre and French at, at one. Um, but I, I've, I've said previously, and not, not, a, not a lot of people will agree with me, I, I'd like to see Hardacre given a go at 13. Oh, um, no. Be the old fashioned loose ball, oh, put, no. put friendship back. Oh, so no. Addict is 100 to 510 kilos. But, but, but we've just, we've just been saying kilos, we've just been saying that the reason why Wiggins' defence is so good is because Addict has organised it and now you want him to move him into the centres or into the well, pack. They've, they've, got, they've signed Bevan French now and, you, you, and you've got to play <laughs> French. I just play French in the centres. No, uh, it's not happening. It's too small um, for being centre. Uh, too small? Yeah. I wouldn't say that to his face. Uh, <laughs> neither would I know. Uh, Scott says why he tries to. I just think he's more of a winger or a fo- uh, or a fullback. Definitely. Uh, right. I think centre. Yeah, I think you'd rather play him at half back than you would at centre. Well, who are they going to play at Hastings and Louis Lai? Yeah. With Powell at nine. Well, anyway. Um, but I, 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 I asked you this last week. Well, we'll put I, that to centre. I asked you this. I asked you this last week, and you, I don't think you found out, or you never answered me. Can Go Morgan Esquire play for Wigan in playoffs? Oh no, I, I didn't. I didn't find it out. I didn't find because I'm saying he's finished his loan at Wakefield. Yeah, but why would he play for Wigan in playoffs? No, I just mean. I just mean like, say Wigan gets snotted, what? You can't. Well, I can't. He broke his shoulder. He just hit his shoulder. <coughs> oh, so he's injured. Yeah. Oh well, well, that saves that debate. I was just thinking the whole Matty Smith scenario from the other year. You know, like well, where he's been. He's trying to play for a spotted Wigan team. 
I'm just saying, like, let's say, well, let's just... say the worst happened and Arde got injured or he was up to no good in the week before the grand final. <coughs> Escade could have come in. That's all I'm saying. No, um, that, that, that wouldn't happen. So you're going, you're going Wigan and Cass. I'm going Salford and Saints. So one of us will be wrong. Well, we could both be wrong because we could get one each. So we'll find Louis, out Louis says we've been crying out for the young lads to get a chance and they keep getting overlooked. So well. Um, Pat Moran's a good, another good example. Of, I mean, I'm not saying Pat Moran's a world beater, but I mean he's not really had much of a chance to prove himself no. at Warrington. He's, 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 he's being, game, he's being released now, and it's like, well, you've obviously got him for a reason. But anyway. Championship playoffs this week, Toulouse Featherston live on Sky, 6.30pm Sunday night. Toulouse home advantage, do you think that's going to be the, the telling factor? Yeah, uh, I love watching Toulouse play. I think they do, they play some fantastic stuff, great attacking rugby, <coughs> um, and I'd back them every, every week at all. Can Toulouse beat Toronto no. next week? Not even a chance? No. Toronto are going up. Are you going 100%? Well, Toronto are winning the grand final, I don't know if they're going up. Have we heard uh, anything about that? So obviously we were at the Super League media brief thing with Robert Elston last week where he said that they've not quite ticked all these boxes or whatever it is that they're having to tick. Now, I have an interesting thought about this because, so our understanding is that, obviously at the moment Toronto pay for all the clubs to go over. Our understanding is that if they go to Super League, they're not going to do that, but as a result they're not going to take the um, central funding, which is obviously the Sky money. But as part of that agreement, Toronto are basically saying that any TV deals that they might negotiate with Canadian TV or whoever, that they get the money from. Now, I, I, which is fair enough for Toronto, completely fine. What I don't really get is that we're talking about, right, if we get Toronto in Super League or whatever, we're going to get these massive sponsorship deals and massive commercial deals and massive broadcast deals. Well, what use is it if all that money's going to Toronto, if you know what I mean? Because that's what the Super League comes are basically saying, well, actually, we, we've got our pies this big and we don't want to give you a piece. And then what's going to happen is, well, or the theory is that Toronto all of a sudden they're going to have this massive pie that all the Super League clubs are going to be looking at, oh, bloody hell, we could have given our little slice of pie for a massive slice of Toronto's pie, but they've not given it. And that's, that's the thing that's confusing me slightly at the moment. I don't know whether that's being fact, I don't know whether that's a stumbling block as to whether, you know, does there have to be some sort of agreement where Super League gets a cut of no the TV, I don't know. But, I mean, like I say... The, the criteria hasn't been released of what Toronto have got to mean specifically, has it? it, it it's got to be to do with logistics, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got it's to. Got to be. Um, you know, actually, I mentioned to. this in the car yesterday. Um, I think the loop fixtures actually plays massively into Toronto's favour here because they Toronto could, in theory, play... Hope, I know there's obviously a big thing about blocks and all that sort of stuff. But if Toronto play their six loop, is it six? Six yep. loop fixtures on the road, i.e. in the UK, they could have them at the start of the season. So play home away for the first 10, 12 rounds. The six home games would be on the road. And then they can go, because obviously there's an issue that they can't play in Canada until like start of May. So I actually think that works, because then every team has to go to Canada once, so it's fairer. They can get away with the home and away. I mean, obviously it's only fair until they get rid of the loot fixtures. Of which they need to get rid of the loot <laughs> fixtures because the loot fixtures are pointless, aren't they? Well, yeah. I mean, well, the, well, yeah. Well, get rid of, yeah. get rid of. Oh, we, we've had this conversation before. Get just, rid of magic. Get rid of loot fixtures. Yeah, just and have fourteen teams. And have fourteen. Teams. But the problem is then is when you do that, Toronto can't play at home until April. You don't like Toronto, do you? I, I, listen, right. I ain't got any. I haven't got an issue with Toronto. Uh, my issue is more with. The rugby league as a whole, in terms of well, what the hell are we doing? What's the structure going to be? Why, why are you aiming towards? Lee, Lee, Lee says that Toronto can only get a deal for broadcasting their own games, which is currently uh, about eight games due to the weather. Uh, would, would it be an issue if Fox Sports shows their own games? I don't think. Why, why would Fox Sports show their own games? I think the big issue is filming, isn't it? Because obviously we've seen that Toronto have cancelled a few games this year because they don't want to have to pay for. Um, the, the filming, so whether films, so that Sky will outsource the filming of it to Televideo or something yeah. like that, and, and obviously that's why some of the games haven't been on. Uh, NRL playoffs this week as well. So tomorrow's game, tomorrow morning's game is Canberra against South Sydney, which is the Battle of Great Britain. Seven British players on show. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> then, hey, that, that's quality though, isn't it? That's uh, that's great to see. I want to I want to see all all of our best players go over there. Why not? Because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the elite league in the world. I'm yeah. sick, I'm sick of, every, of hearing everyone say uh, Super League have got to try and retain its best players. Well, not not necessarily because, like we, we was touching on Wigan, we've got we've got all these 
great young kids coming yeah, through yeah. anyway at, at, at all clubs we're not just Wigan we, we see great kids coming through at all clubs um, yeah, let, if, the, if, the better, if the better ones go to yeah, the NRL let then a, more let a George play. Williams let a Luke Thompson go to, to the NRL we want to see him one and thrive we, we want the best players to be playing in the best leagues that's what we say in football and it works in football the, the, the best players play in the best leagues and, and that's in the story but it's it's going to be a great game Se, seven English lads on show with it with the, the national coach as well, I know he's not English, but with the national coach uh, involved as well, Wayne Bennett. 10 to, uh, ten to 11 cool. kick-off that one tomorrow. Saturday, Sydney Roosters against Melbourne Storm, another 10 to 11 kick-off. Saturday afternoon, conference uh, the National Conference League Premier Division playoff semi-final, uh, Wath Brown Hornets against Thato Heath Crusaders. Um, Sunday is the League One playoff Eliminator, I don't know what they're calling it. Newcastle <laughs> against Doncaster. 12 noon kickoff. The winner meets Oldham, don't they? The winner plays Oldham at Oldham uh, in the League One Grand Final for promotion to the Championship. Um, women's Super League action on Sunday as well. Uh, Castleford take their perfect record to St Helens. Bradford against York. Featherston against Wakefield. Leeds against Wigan. And that is almost all. Yeah, uh, David just says is Lampard Stadium up to Super League standard? I think it is. Yeah, it is uh, so. it's, it's a pretty good game to be fair. Well, I mean, it's a strange one when you look. He's got no cover, has he? But I mean, I can't see why it wouldn't be. Well, it's no worse than Casper and Wakefield. If you compare it to the Mobile Rocket Stadium yeah, at yeah, work, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's got to be Super League standard. But uh, thanks for all your questions. Uh, appreciate it yeah. as always. We're getting more and more each week. Uh, we enjoy the debate. And, we uh, do. And that's it. Well, yeah, that's thanks for joining us every Thursday, 12 to, well, every Thursday subject to, uh, yeah, <laughs> issues out and beyond our control. Every Thursday, 12 to 1 on our Facebook page. We'll also make this available through the website. It's on demand on Facebook. It'll go on YouTube as well. Um, thanks to Betfred for their sponsorship to enable us to keep doing this. Um, and we will see you next week. Enjoy the playoffs this weekend.